All right, so that was shot number one. Uh, we took four shots on it, and that's also roll number one. You, we just use a whole roll on one shot. That's, that's <laughs> the world of panorama. <laughs> It's uh, it's like six in the morning. I don't even know how to. All right, so what's going on is, this is a pond. It's usually a pond. So there are these like big, myth. big uh. <laughs> I'm like, here we are. We're pointing through this brush, towards the sunrise. Todd's really going for it. This is this is one of those propositions that you go for it with. So that footage was actually shot like three months ago. Todd and I went out uh, before the sun came up in Denton and took a big 6x17 film camera and we just tried to take as many photos as we could. Uh, but since then, I've been really busy. I moved to New York um, and I also went on a couple more pano shoots that I want to talk about today. So with all that being said, this is five things to know about panoramic photography. <laughs> Now the idea of panoramic photography actually comes from the phrase panoptic, which was created or invented by a guy named Jeremy Bentham in the 18th century. Uh, and it was designed so that you could watch all of the prisoners in a jail from one point. So you get the complete view. Now the, while that sounds really dark, it is but Greater Minds eventually applied it to photography and found a way to stitch photos together to create a very wide perspective. And that wide perspective brings me to my next point, which is panoramic photography is not so much what you're seeing, but how you're seeing it. So don't think of it as if it's just a really, really wide shot and you can see a lot of the horizon or whatever it is that you're looking at, uh, but it's more so the aspect ratio of the shot. So if the width is twice as long as the height of the, of the image, uh, then it's a panoramic photo. The lens cap is off. All right, hold on, let me turn, let me turn this light on. The uh, lens cap is off, I think. So. Let's start. It's kind of interesting. I guess, I guess when you're shooting this much of a pano it's like large format just spread across a wide area okay i gotta take the shot and shut the yeah door. yeah <laughs> here we go first i want to talk about focusing now with todd and i shoot we used a big film camera that the way to focus was actually you had to measure how far you were from the subject um, there was no rangefinder, any way to actually tell what was in focus, so we just had to guess a lot of the times. Okay, and focus, focus, focus. Probably three meters. Which one? Uh, that guy, right there. Yeah. Um, three meters. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Sounds good, <laughs> no idea. But normally, if you're using a digital camera, it's best to turn the autofocus off because if you're, no matter how you're shooting, if it's on a tripod or handheld, um, you're moving the lens as you take shots over a distance. So with doing that, if autofocus is on, there's a chance that it could catch focus on different things, different depths of field. So, and you're in product, it might end up being weird like focus stacked as in one side of the frame is in focus on a building whereas the other is on a tree that's in front of the building. So it's best to turn the autofocus off. We're getting a little bit more light so I'm, I'm a one fourth of a second with um, we're at f32 we're shooting the Fuji 400H. And here we go, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this one. Now I know this next one might sound a little lazy, but when the boys and I went to Big Ben, um, I took a medium format shot of this canyon. And I brought it home, I edited it, and I was looking at it, and I was like, something was just missing. 
And then Todd came in and actually had a good idea, which was crop it down to six by 17. So when you're going into a panorama shoot, what I would do is actually look at your old photos and crop some of them down to a panoramic aspect ratio. What this could do is help you realize what kind of composition you wanna get, what you like seeing, what kind of panoramas you wanna end up taking. Uh, I found that going into a shoot, kind of knowing what I've already shot in mind kind of gives me a better idea of like what I want to do, what I want more of, um, and what kind of photo I wanna take. This is not so much as like telling you which one to shoot or which one's better than the other, um, but it's more so how you should shoot for landscape versus street. So landscape, uh, I think is totally acceptable to use more long exposure, use a tripod if you want, uh, mainly because there are not a lot of things moving. Street, you've got people walking around which can make panos hard because if you're taking photos across one area, there could be one person walking from the right side and end up on the left side in the same photo. So I think generally it's safe to say to have a faster shutter and go through the pano shots as quickly as possible if you're in a city um, because things are changing and moving very quickly. I found it to be actually very difficult and I had to wait a lot of the time for red lights so that cars could stop. And then one thing to consider when you're shooting landscape is the changing light. So by the time that you get from one side of your pano to the other, let's say you're taking five shots. If you have a long exposure, a longer exposure, let's say you're doing like five seconds. By the time you get to that fifth shot, a minute will have gone by and so the light may have changed. So it's really important to consider how fast the light is changing when you're out there in the field. Next, I want to talk about actually using the tripod. There are certain pieces of gear that you can buy. Uh, they have like pano heads that attach to the top of the tripod, like on the ball head. And what these do is they keep the lens directly on top of the rotation axis to avoid shifts in perspective. And these just help with the post-production process. And so you're not having two items at slightly different angles and they're not able to align when you stitch them in Lightroom or Photoshop. But I don't think you necessarily need uh, a pano head. I think you could do it handheld or stick with your ball head tripod. And if you're using a tripod, it's best to try to keep it as level as best you can. Minimal movement, like always. Um, and a couple things that I like to do is I like to weight the tripod down with like a backpack or something. But a lot of the time I actually prefer to shoot handheld uh, because as long as you overlap the image about 20 to 30% between each shot, um, Lightroom does a pretty good job of stitching it all together in a pretty seamless way. Now once you drop your photos into Lightroom, just highlight all of them, go to photo, then hit photo merge, and then after you've done that, just hit panorama. Now you're going to merge. Now Lightroom usually does this pretty quickly, so you don't ever have to really wait that long. And then you'll notice that once you look at your photo, it's a little bit warped, but you can still crop it down from that point uh, to fit whatever aspect ratio that you want for your panorama. Now, if you're gonna post these to Instagram, you might have seen someone before, um, they've posted like separate photos and when you swipe, it's kind of one seamless image. Um, how you do this is pretty simple. Just bring it into Photoshop. You're gonna use the slice tool, drag and drop over the whole image. Then you're gonna right click the little blue box on the top left corner. Then hit divide slice, divide vertically into however many pictures you want. Then just go to file, export, save for web and then there you can save your photo and it'll be split up and then you just enter it into instagram just remember guys there is no single right way to take a photo shoot whatever you want to shoot take a photo however you want to take a photo 
it does not matter, just have fun with it. And let us know in the comments what you wanna see on this channel in terms of photography. And yeah, I'm really excited. Dude, this is so hard. There's so many noises in this city. Okay, I'll see you in the next one.